Okay, uh, welcome to the Hubfus EcoBiz show where you can get ideas to grow your business and make it greener. And today I'm joined by Katie Skelton from Little Green Duck. And we're talking about business visibility and finding ways to get your business seen without having to do the stuff you hate. So welcome, Katie. Great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me, Karen. Oh, so I know this is going to be a really great one because it's something a lot of especially small business owners really struggle with. Uh, so Katie is a business visibility mentor and the founder of Little Green Duck. I know a lot of people in my audience and beyond have seen her posts on LinkedIn and she used to have a membership as well. Um, now she helps business owners who care more about than just profits to simplify and amplify their business visibility through informal coaching and action setting sessions. So can you tell us a little bit more about business visibility and what, what this means? Yeah, sure. So it, it can mean lots of different things to different people. But what it means to me um, in a, a very short sense is um, just all the ways that you get your business seen. Um, and that can be by your ideal customer, but also by potential partners, by people who can support you, by collaborators, potential suppliers. So it's a, a really kind of rounded view of all the different ways that different people that you want to see your business can see your business. Excellent. And what are some of the ways that you can help businesses get seen without having to do the stuff they hate? I know, you know, this is a struggle for so many people and they're just like, oh, I like doing this, but I don't like doing that. You know, what, what, are, what are some of those ways? Yeah. So one of the things that I go through with you mentioned my action setting settings sessions, rather. Um, one of the things that I go through with a lot of my clients is identifying huge a lot of the time you have a huge list of things in your head that you think you should be doing um, and I know we'll probably talk more about the fact that the word should is my nemesis um, but lots of people think right okay I need to be posting on Facebook I need to be on TikTok because everyone's telling me I need to be on TikTok I need to be so covering five different social media platforms blogging being on podcasts LinkedIn like Pinterest and all of this stuff is just in your head and then this overwhelm just leads to inaction because you don't know where to start. You don't know what the best thing to do is. So one of the exercises I go through with my clients is writing down all of the different things that you've either been told you should do, you've tried, you are trying, you, you're currently doing to get your business more visible. visible um, and then working through them and asking which are the ones that you really, really enjoy doing and putting kind of a, a color coded mark next to the things that you really love doing? Which are the things that get results um, and that you've got proven this actually gets me sales? This has got me leads. Um, and then also identifying the things that you really hate doing and the things that you don't get the results. So where you've got two kind of green marks, if you like, so you've got, I love doing this and it gets results. That's something you can keep, you can kind of do more of, you can work out a plan to move forward with because it's something that kind of feels right to you in your soul and it doesn't feel too difficult. Um, all of the things that get kind of too two black marks so you hate doing them and they don't get you any results you can just scrap them straight away you can forget about them forever if you hate making tiktok videos and you don't get any sales from them you might get 300 likes but you don't make any sales or you don't get any leads from them scrap it so it's a really kind of quick exercise to go through and you can do it by yourself really easily as well um where you can just kind of extricate all those things that you can keep and amplify um, and then there's this middle ground where there's things that you don't particularly like doing, but you know, get you results. And those are the things where you can start having a discussion um, with with yourself or with your team or um, just start thinking about whether there's anything that you can start to outsource to other people. Because then if you know that it's getting results and you're going to get a return on that investment, it might be worth looking into. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of a way that I help people assess and kind of out the stuff that isn't working for them that's brilliant yeah some really good tips there and i think as well you know with someone working with someone like you a mentor or coach you know i think people struggle to let those things go even though you say right well that's they're not enjoying that it's not working it's not getting results they still feel like oh but how do i just stop that you know yeah. completely i think it's a real struggle so i think by that way you know if you know, for people who are watching this and watching the replay later, you know, it, 
sometimes it is worth really reaching out to a coach or mentor to just help you get over those things. Um, right, so we're going to the, the, the nemesis word that you mentioned, <laughs> should. Um, why, why is this? What what has um, been the problem there? It's. I just speak to so many people who have, uh, there's there's so much information out there in the world about the way you should run your business. So it's so many blogs, so many courses, so many free downloads and lead magnets and stuff. I know I've got loads of stuff that's piled up in my inbox over the years and I've taken bits and bobs of it that have actually been useful. And then other things, they just sit with me and kind of eat away and start thinking, well, if I'm not doing that, am I not gonna be successful? And that is what I'm trying to kind of help people let go of the fact that all of those shoulds all of those things that people tell you you should be doing you might not necessarily should be doing if it's not working for you if it makes you feel bad in some way whether that's overwhelmed or you just don't want to do it or it's your business you can do it your way so you can chuck out those shoulds um, and you can still have a successful business one thing that i've been thinking about or talking to a lot of people about recently is social media and I think people are struggling with it a lot. The fact that so much time and energy goes into it. And mm. for a lot of the time, five, 10% of your overall followers see your social media posts, um, particularly on Instagram at the moment, which has just gone haywire. Um, and But people think that because they've been going at it for so long, they should keep going. But it's all right to go, actually, do you know what? There's other ways to get your business seen. I'm gonna try something else for a bit. You can come back to it if that other way doesn't work. Um, that it's all right to kind of test stuff and tweak stuff and do things your way because that's one of the whole points of running your own business. I think it's it's that freedom to be able to go, no, nope, this isn't working for me. I'm going to try something new. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And and I think in the past, I think, you know, this is where I think a lot of things is changing now in the business world for small people because in the past it was like yeah you have to be there you have to be visible everywhere you have to be on all these platforms and be where your audience possibly are and and posting out and trying everything but you're right it takes up so much time and I mean I know I've cut down massively on where I'm where I'm spending my time and just trying to be really focused you know maybe specific memberships that I'll spend more time in or specific groups of people maybe more time on LinkedIn I've you know stopped doing Facebook now because it was mm. you know I was I was posting up Facebook and yes getting it getting engagement but actually the more effort I was putting into it the less reach I was getting and I was just like I'm just fighting you know and it's against a brick wall so yeah. I think it's really important to you know just sometimes step back and have a look at that and go you know this is burning me out yeah um, yeah definitely yeah. So that's some really good advice. Uh, so can you share some of your um, top, top eco tips? Yes. So um, my my favourite eco tips at the moment are around um, your digital carbon footprint, which I know will be something that's quite close to your heart anyway, Karen. Um, but my favourite thing to advise people to do who are thinking, a, a lot of people think, well, I just run an online business, so how can I be more sustainable? How can I make my business greener? Um, and I advise everybody to go and tackle your Canva account because every time you open a template in Canva, it saves itself in your own Canva account, which is taking up kind of energy and resources every single, even if you don't end up using that template. So yeah, my one top tip for everybody who is watching that wants a really kind of quick, quite mindless way of getting rid of some of the, the kind of bulk in their business and making it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more green is to go and delete some stuff out of your Canva account. And it feels so much nicer when it's all gone as well. Brilliant. That's actually one I haven't tackled yet. So thank you for the reminder. Because <laughs> um, I do often go sort of, you know, through my files on my computer and in the cloud and everything else and sort of, and it makes it easy to find as well rather yeah. than waiting through loads of stuff. So yeah, okay, that's going to be on my list to go and do my Canva account as well. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you've got, um, so basically uh, you've, you've got an offer. How can people get in touch with you, you know, uh, see what that what you're doing you know possibly work with you what are the ways they can do that 
Yeah, sure. So probably the best way of finding me at the moment is just searching for Katie Skelton on LinkedIn um, or my website is littlegreenduck.co.uk. And if you'd like to book in a free chat at the moment, I'm booking in free chats with people um, to identify your number one source of overwhelm and then send you away with an actionable tip to help you get over it. Because a lot of people are struggling with overwhelm and, at the moment. So yeah, 20 minute chats with people, totally free, no obligation, not going to do a hard sell on you. Um, I just want to try and help as many business owners as I can in September to get over that overwhelmed feeling. Oh, that's fantastic. So do they just go, do they go straight to your website and book and is it a Calendly link or something? Yeah, there's a Calendly link on the front page of my website that you can book straight in. Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay. And I know as well, you do, a, you, some, you do something called My Ducks in a Row. Yes. Yes. So that's my 90 minute uh, mentoring sessions, which you can tackle as much or as little as you like in that really. So it's, um, you can come and you can go, right, my mind is full of all these ideas let's unpick them and get them into a, a bit of a project plan so you know what to move forward with a lot of people put um come onto those sessions to put together um content pillars for their marketing um so anything to do with visibility that you're stuck on and you're thinking oh i could just do with a sounding board we do a bit of pre-work questionnaire then we'll spend 90 minutes really getting into the depths of what you need to work through and then you get an action plan afterwards to move forward with so um you're not left completely alone once we're done Brilliant. That sounds amazing. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. You've really shared Thank a lot you. of great tips. I think will be really great for our audience. Really good to have you on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Karen. Thank you. And for those of you um, watching, you can obviously um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, also, there's details below in the description. You can sign up to the newsletter to have it delivered into your inbox. And we'll see you same time next week. Take care for now.